Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Kay Nash. We're going to jump right into this prophetic word I'm feeling from the Lord. Jesus, if you feel like you're not fitting in right now, I feel like this is a word from the Lord for you. So here we go. You are not made to fit in. It is okay to stand out. Peter warmed himself when other servants kept working, afraid their master would scold them for taking too long by the fire. But Peter knew who he was and wasn't afraid of the fire. He wasn't afraid to linger. He knew his identity better than the servants because he was a friend of God. But his position made him known. As you get close to the fire, people might question, why do you wait by the fire? Why do you linger? Get to work. But you are a child of God. You wait on me and stay by the fire, for I am burning things out of you that do not belong. It is a process, but you are doing well. One step at a time, like a child learning to walk. Learn your identity and be free of others' opinions of who you are. Jesus. Mm. Um, I want to go into some scripture here that's going to kind of explain where I got this from. Um, we're going to go into Matthew 14, 66 through 71. Um, I'm just going to read this to you and then we'll kind of unpack this. And as Peter was beneath in the hall, there came one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, that's the part I want to emphasize right now. She looked on him and said, thou was also with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied saying, I know him not. Um, neither was I with him like you said. Then he went out into the porch and the cock crew. Um, then a maid saw him again and began to say to him that stood by, this is one of them. But he denied again and again. Then that they that stood by said to Peter, surely you are one of them. You are from Galilee. Your speech is like those. And he began to curse and swear. Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, there is a lot to take away from this passage but what i really want to talk about today is that peter warmed himself now what does it have to do with fitting in okay so what we see here is that the maid notices that peter is not one of them okay peter had decided to follow jesus after he had been taken and he was trying to like hide and follow jesus so that he could find out what's going on but on his way to following Jesus, he kind of had to pull back and be in a certain area, a place where the servants were, in order to look on but not get too close that he's going to get entangled in things. So he ended up with the servants. Now, what's interesting about this, and this is what I talked to the Lord about, and this is where all of this came from, is I said, God, why is it important to know that Peter was by the fire? Why is it important to know that Peter warmed himself? Why does that actually even matter, okay? And the Lord began to take me on a journey about why this matters and what this means. Because, you know, I think often when we read the scripture, we're like, oh, it's because of his speech. But she doesn't mention his speech till the third time that he is approached. What she notices first is that he's by the fire, Jesus. Now, why is this matter? Why did him being by the fire make her say, hmm, I don't know if this is one of us. I don't know if this is a servant of the high priest. He looks a little different than us. Why would being by the fire make him different? You know why? Because he was willing to just stand there and receive, okay? The other servants would not just be standing for a long period of time by the fire. Why do we know that it's been there for a while? Because they come up to him again, as you see in this passage, and they say he was still standing by the fire. Peter is just standing there. Servants do not just stand there, okay? Servants are always on the move, but Peter had an awareness of his identity and because of his awareness, he was exposed. He had been with Jesus, so all he thought to himself was, I'm cold, so I'm going to stand by the fire to warm myself. They thought he is not a servant because he is spending all this time not working, Jesus. 
But Peter knew his identity as a son of God because he had been around Jesus. Because of the way that Jesus treated him, Peter just naturally didn't act like a servant. God had said to them, you are no longer servants. I call you friends. And you know that he was not seeing them from a place of he was higher than him. He was seeing them as a place of I'm going to call you a friend. Now, obviously, God is higher than them, but that's not how he was going to treat them. Okay, he was going to treat them as equals. Okay, and so he didn't see any bother in this. He was so wrapped up in an identity as a friend and a son of God that he around servants did not fit in. When you start really walking with Jesus, and we see here that Peter is following after Jesus to see what's happening with him, you're going to not exactly look like the others around you. You know, it's one thing to follow Jesus as a servant. It's another thing to be a friend and a son and a daughter of God. You are going to start to say, I matter. I don't have to be treated certain ways. I don't have to act certain ways. I don't have to be around certain things. If I need something, I can get that. You know, he started to realize that if he needed something, he can get it. Why? Because Jesus was his provider. And so he needed warmth. He went by the fire, but the fire exposed him. The fire showed that he was not a servant and he was found out. And obviously, you know, we know it's because of his speech. That's a very common thought, but I don't think we talk enough in the church about the fire. And, you know, it's also interesting because I think it's a symbolic picture here. It's like Peter was just used to being by the fire. Okay, he was used to being there and just warming himself. Why? Because he was used to being with Jesus. And what does it say? It says God is an all consuming fire. He was used to the fiery things. He wasn't afraid of fire. He wasn't running from the fire. He was sitting there by the fire. Now, if you go back into our Rhema verse, it's like God said, why do you wait by the fire? That's what they will say. Okay, they'll be like, why are you waiting by the fire? In other words, why are you just sitting there with Jesus? Shouldn't you get to work? Shouldn't you be doing something? Shouldn't you just do things like us? And God is telling you, you know, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay to linger with God. It's okay to pull back. It's okay to have time to set up, you know, Jesus. You know, we don't have to move at the pace of algorithms. We have to move at the pace of anointing Jesus, okay? We are supposed to linger with Jesus. We are supposed to be changed by Jesus. Are you running so quick that God can't change you because you're running in the flesh? There is a time to run with horses, but you have to be with Jesus to run with horses. Because what happens is you pull back to spring ahead. You know, I call this in my ministry, I call this the rubber band effect, okay? It's not like a biblical thing, but it is biblical once I explain it. It's like you take a rubber band and you pull it back. And when you pull it back, it flings ahead. It's the same thing when we spend time with God. It, we pull it back and it springs ahead. And so, you know, but if you just kind of throw a rubber band, it's not gonna go as far as when you pull it back, okay? Pulling it back, spending time with Jesus is actually going to make you run faster. And, and it's going to make you run in the right direction because if you're just running into the flesh, you might be running into a wall, okay? But I just wanted to encourage some of you today, the reason you might feel like you don't fit in anywhere is because you've been with Jesus. Because here's the thing, when you start being around Jesus a lot, you start changing. And if there's people around you that have not been spending time with Jesus, you are gonna start looking different than them. You are gonna start acting different than them because we go from glory to glory. You can't get in the presence of God and stay the same. No, he is a God of truth and he's constantly refining us. He's constantly changing us. Now, yes, we are new creations and we are already changed, but there's also a natural part of being refined and changing over time. And so don't be surprised if as you stay alone with Jesus, as you're refined like Jesus, you're not gonna look like those people over there. 
And that's okay because God is transitioning. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. God is transitioning you to new people. God is transitioning you to new destinations to put you around people that actually spend time with the Lord. Not religious people who talk Christian ease, but people that carry the anointing of God, people that carry the fire of God, people that have obviously been in the presence of God. That's where God is sending you, okay? He's pulled you back so you could be ready to be around people that carry certain anointings that you might not have been able to be around before. You know, you can't get around super anointed people and be certain ways because it's not that they won't love you, but they won't think you're one of them. And so you might be in a transition season right now where God is filling you with his presence so you can really run with those horses. So you could really run with those deliverance ministers. So you could really run with those business owners. So you could really, I don't know, this must be for someone specific. So you could really run with those babysitting owners. You know, so you could really run with those that entrepreneur mantle, God's highlighting entrepreneurs right now. So you could really run with those other prophets. So you could really run with those other teachers. So you could really run with those other apostles. The only way you're going to run with people on the next level is for you to get alone with Jesus and get by the fire. It is time for you to warm yourself. Now, here's a practical thing. You know, God might tell you to not do certain things and people get offended by that. God might tell you to dress a certain way and people around you are going to get offended by that. Why are you wearing a suit to our meetings? Who do you think you are? And you start you start realizing your identity. Now, I'm not saying suits are holy. Suits are not for everyone. Some people are not called to wear them, but you know, I am and that's part of me, okay? But it's like people might get offended by that because they might think you're trying to be better than them but you're not trying to be better than them and i want you to take off some guilt right now you're not trying to be better than them by wearing what you're supposed to wear and someone god just told me someone's supposed to wear all white and i, I had a season like that too and it's like you got to wear that stuff you got to be different and if they don't like you and they cast you out that's on them if somebody really cast you out because they don't like the clothes you wear they, they already have too many problems. That's not a reason to cast people out, okay? That is, there are serious reasons to cast people out. That's not one of them, okay? And so you're going to start looking different as you start spending more and more time with Jesus. Linger by the fire like Peter, okay? Let the servants around you get confused. You know, we're going to see the sons and daughters of God be revealed. It doesn't say we're going to see the servants of God be revealed. We're going to see the sons and daughters of God be revealed. Why are we going to see the sons and daughters of God be revealed? Because they are going to change. They are going to look different. They're going to actually know the Father. And as you know the Father, you spend time with Him, His present leaks on you. You start changing. You start looking different. And so you start being revealed. Jesus, hallelujah. Mm. I want to pray right now for some of you that feel like you're around a bunch of people that just don't get you, okay? I, I totally have been in those seasons multiple times. I've been in those seasons. And often when that's happening, God is causing a friction because he's about to move you. Now, sometimes it's because, you know, things need to be dealt with. But if you've dealt with all the things, you know, you've had the conversations you've need to had, you know, you've talked to people about your concerns, whatever it is, and you still feel that friction of like, I just don't belong here is because God has been preparing you in the secret place to move you to your next season, Jesus. So don't get offended. Realize that you're getting promoted. Hallelujah. God, I just pray right now for all the people listening who do not feel like they fit in where they're at. They feel like they are the only prophet in the church, the only apostle in the area, the only evangelist on the streets. They feel like they're the only preacher in their town. They feel like they're the only one who really feel, hears the Holy Ghost. They feel like they're the only one who can interpret dreams in their area. And they just feel so stuck, so isolated, and so alone. God, I pray right now that you would lead them to the people they're supposed to be with. I pray right now for their community to come in. I pray right now for people people for you to talk to, for people you to cry with, for people to hug you. I felt the Holy Spirit drop when I said the word hug. Some of you, 
You need a community right now that can just hug you. It's not about you falling out in the Holy Ghost. It's not about you getting physically healed. Some of you, you just need a hug, Jesus. And I pray right now that you can get that safe hug. It's not manipulative. It's not fake. It's not with false motives or, you know, in a, in a romantic way, but just a way of caring, in a way of concern, in a way of like, I'm really here for you. I'm not, I'm not preaching on a platform, Jesus, so that you come to my meetings. I'm preaching on a platform so you can get healed. I'm preaching on a platform so you can get hugged. I'm preaching on a platform so you can get delivered, okay? I pray that you would get around people like that, that really care for the one, you know, um, mm. You know, at one of my meetings, God kind of told me, he said, you need to go around and hug a lot of people at this meeting. And that kind of sounds weird, but it's just like people really need that right now. The world is going crazy right now. It's like people are dealing with all sorts of things. People are dying. People are losing their jobs. People are fighting legal battles. It's just like there's all sorts of demonic stuff going on. Sometimes people just need a hug, Jesus. And so I pray right now you find those safe places that you can just unwind, that you could be you. You don't have to have your hair perfect. You don't have to have your clothes perfect, whatever. You're going to be loved for who you are. And as you transform, that you find the right places, the safe places, the anointed places for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. All right, you guys, I wanted to release an update announcement really quick um it's a good announcement basically i am going to be going back on television um i'm going to be going back on um march 11th and it's going to be friday nights um it's going to be on a local station in florida so unfortunately if you're not in florida you will not see it um, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys a heads up for that. I recently got a phone call from the TV station kind of asking me if I wanted to do that, that they had a slot open. Um, and so I said yes, and we have already signed the contract with them. And thank you to all of you members. We were able to just say yes because we had enough members that we were able to pay for our airtime. Um, and so I know the Lord had kind of been telling me to ask for members recently, and I realize now why. It's because we were going to be going back on television. For those of you who have been with us a long time, you know that we had been on television and then God told us to get off. And that was several years ago, and but I feel like the time is now. I feel like we are getting back on. God is gonna do something with television. It was seemingly you know, going downwards, but God is bringing it back up. God is gonna redeem television. He kind of had to pull down to bring up. And so I really believe God's gonna do something with that. And so um, I'm gonna have more info as time goes on for details on that. Um, but yeah, it's just gonna be every Friday night I will be on um, in on Super Channel Orlando. Um, so that's a new update on my end. And um, if you haven't become a member yet, consider becoming one. Those are the kinds of things we're looking forward to doing in the future and paying for that. So you can go to knashministries.com and just click on the giving tab and then click on membership. And in the future, we're gonna have a tab that just says members. So if you're watching this video um, later on, it, the tab might change, but just look for that tab as well. But anyway, you guys, I'm really excited to kind of move that way. Um, again, for those of you that have really been following me, you know that I used to be a television producer in news and talk show. And so I'm excited to get back into television. That's I have an anointing there too. So we'll see what God does and hopefully he blesses a lot of people with our programming. So thank you guys for making that possible and pray for us as we move forward with that. All right, you guys, I love you, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you're new, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, I'll talk to you guys then. Bye. Okay, just one more thing. I thought it was really interesting that I was going on March 11th, and I thought of Ecclesiastes 3.11, where God says everything is beautiful in its time. So I'll just leave you with that. All right, you guys, have a blessed day. Bye.